Hello and welcome back to Metal Machine Shop. This video is an update to my tilting trike project. If you watched my earlier videos you may have seen my Mark 1 tilting trike. This was an experimental prototype to prove the concept of whether a tilting mechanism would actually work. It was made of wood just for convenience and cheapness and I gave it a test ride and it did essentially work. I was able to ride it, but it did have quite a few problems. The main problem really was the difficulty in balancing it. It was very difficult to stay upright and the steering was very twitchy and had to be constantly adjusted to maintain the balance. It was also quite long and wide and fairly unwieldy, not really a practical machine. The ground clearance was far too low really to be used in practice. So over the last year or so, I've been working on the design for a Mark II trike, and I've tried to resolve all the difficulties with the first version. This is a schematic side view of the new trike, the Mark II, and the main difference is that the wheelbase is quite a lot shorter. If we switch the dimensions on, the wheelbase for the new trike is 1560mm, and the old one was 1800 so that's 440mm shorter, which should make it more practical. If we switch around to the front view, the track is also much narrower. The previous trike was 740mm wheel track, and this one has 600mm track, so that's 140mm narrower. The reason for this is just to make the machine more practical, and obviously the narrower the better. And because it's a tilting trike, you don't need the extra width to give you stability, because the stability comes from tilting, just like it does on a normal bike. If we compare the side views of the new and the old trike, you can see the difference. This is the new trike and the rider is positioned quite a bit higher up to raise the centre of gravity. The reason for this is to make the trike less twitchy and tilt, so like a bicycle, the higher the centre of gravity, the easier it is to balance, and conversely, the lower the centre of gravity, the more difficult it will be to balance. This was a problem with the old trike. So this is the old trike, just ignore the body shell for now, I've not really got around to making that. You can see the rider's position is much lower, and because he's lower, you need a longer wheelbase between the front and the back wheels to fit the rider in, and so another advantage of raising the rider up is to allow a shorter wheelbase. Switching back to the front view, you can see that the relative position of the pedal crank and the front wheel. On the new trike, the pedals are much further forward relative to the front wheel, or the front wheel's much further back, depending on how you look at it. In the old one, you can see that the pedal crank is quite a bit further back. Looking at the steering geometry, this is the old trike, which has a very conventional geometry. The same as most normal bicycles. The steering axis is positioned at 73 degrees from the horizontal, and the rake or offset at the ground level is 45mm, so that's very standard for a normal bike, and it worked well on the older trike. On the new trike, I've gone for a much more upright steering axis of 86 degrees from the horizontal. This is similar to most Velomobiles, in fact. Again, the offset on the ground is 40.5mm, the same as the old one. I've gone for a much more upright steering axis on this trike for a number of reasons. Firstly, when you steer the wheels left or right, with a more upright axis, that reduces the amount by which the wheels camber over. So whether that's an advantage or not remains to be seen, but it is a fact in any case. But the main reason is to allow the tilting arms to be positioned further forward relative to the wheels. So this point here that you can see is the point at which the upper tilting arm is attached to the swivel mechanism. And by having the steering axis more vertical, it allows that point to be moved quite a bit further forwards than it was in the old one. So this point here where the cursor is, is where it was on the old one. This is where it is on the new one. And what that means is that the tilting arms are moved further forward relative to the wheel and that allows better options when it comes to the layout and the clearance with the pedals. So the pedal stroke here is the blue circle and is essentially the swept arc that has to clear the tilting arms. So this arrangement makes it easy to move the wheels back a little bit whilst maintaining the clearance with the pedals. Moving around to the front view again, this is a look at the steering geometry of the new trike. This vertical line here is the centre of the wheel, and this angled line is the steering axis, and the points at which they intersect with ground level, which is this horizontal black line, 
is offset by 25mm. The track is 600mm, as I said earlier. These two arms here and here are the tilting arms, which are both 230mm long, so the same length top and bottom, which means that the track doesn't change as the tilting happens. The top arm is split in the middle, but the two sides meet at this single point in the centre. The bottom arms are separated by about 50mm, I think. This particular layout just follows the angle of the steering axis. If we look at the old trike, the layout is broadly similar, but the upper arm was quite a bit higher up, which didn't really matter, but just meant that the overall layout was not as compact as it might have been. This is the assembly view of the new trike. The frame is made from steel tube. I've only modelled one front wheel at the moment, as I couldn't work out how to mirror the right hand wheel, but it does actually help you to see what's going on with the tilting mechanism. I haven't modelled the pedals or the steering mechanism at this point, or indeed the seat, but it just gives you an idea of the main components and how they all fit together. So what we've got at the rear end here, like the front wheels, the back wheel is 20 inches. I've added suspension this time, so at this point here I'm just going to be fitting something like a rubberized suspension member, just to give you a little bit of shock absorption. Moving to the front view, this gives you an idea as to how the tilting mechanism works. You can see that as we tilt, the angle of the steering wheels isn't affected, so the geometry is such as to allow that. At the top and bottom of the vertical steering member we have ball joints, or rod end bearings if you like. The same goes for the steering arms. So the steering linkages have rod end bearings at each end which allows both the steering and the tilting mechanism. The tilting arms themselves are simply hinged at their inner ends. In the model I've shown ball joints but actually these are going to be bearings of some sort on the finished machine. There's also going to be suspension on the front tilting mechanism. I've just modelled it as a solid bar at this point, but this piece here will be a shock absorber or an air shock or some such thing. Maybe just a rubberized pad to give you a little bit of ride comfort. One of the things I was very conscious of was the overall compactness of the machine, particularly for storage. So this version is designed to be foldable. The suspension member here can be swung out of the way and the arms folded up and pinned here, so helping reduce width quite considerably for storage. As far as the hardware is concerned, the front wheels will have 20 inch rims and I've got Sturmey Archer drum brake hubs fitted. I've modelled this one in the CAD program just to accurately design the finished machine. Moving to the rear, we have a Nexus 8 internal hub gear mechanism fitted. This is exactly the same hardware as I used on the previous trike, so it's just moved across from the old one to the new one. This is the actual design for the frame and tilting arms. The frame is made of 35mm steel tubing and the tilting arms are also made of steel tubes but various different sizes. I haven't modelled the chain or the other parts at this point but I'll show these in a later video. So that's how the design's coming together. I've actually started making this new trike now in the workshop so there will be more videos to follow showing the build process through from start to finish. Hopefully it's going to come together quite quickly because I've got most of the hardware from the previous trike so it's just a case of transferring the components across. Thank you for watching and I hope you found it interesting. If you do have any comments or questions let me know in the chat section below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're interested and hit the notification bell so that you know next time I upload a video. Bye for now.